I posted a video a few days ago of my other property that's being thinned. After taking a look at that property, I got inspired to do some thinning on this place. You may notice in the foreground, these trees are nicely spaced, but if you look in the background, no matter how you look at them, there are just too many trees back here. Today we're going to thin these out and I'll show you why I'm choosing to take the ones I'm going to take and why I'm choosing to leave the ones I'm going to leave. First, we'll take a look at the area next to it. Right next to it is an open area that used to be really thick with trees. If you look at the ground, you can see the stumps that used to be here. Stumps all the way from back there, all the way to where the thick trees are. What every one of these stumps has in common is they are Douglas fir and they died. Over the years, I've been continually salvaging trees out of this spot as they die. All of them Douglas fir. This is the latest one that died. What that tells me is if most of the Douglas fir trees are dying in this spot, but all of the other types of trees are living and in a lot of cases thriving, maybe this isn't a good place for Douglas fir. Mr. Obvious strikes again. These incense cedars are doing well. The pines are doing well. Out in this open area where all the Douglas fir died, this one incense cedar is doing quite well. With that in mind, I think we should take out the Douglas fir and favor the incense cedar and the pine. We have a well-formed, healthy cedar here, one here, one here, and a pine here. These Douglas fir need to go. We'll start with this one. It's got a lot of sweep to it, which means it has a crook in it, like banana shaped. I'm going to send it out that way. I don't want to go that way and smash those madrones. I'm going to try to squeeze it right between this cedar and these pines. The chances of getting it to push through all those branches without getting hung up ranges from decent to poor. There's a very good chance it'll get hung up. I'm willing to risk the chance of it getting hung up in those bigger trees to reduce the risk of damaging those smaller trees. <laughs> I would like to upgrade those chances of it not getting hung up from decent to poor up to decent to excellent. I'll show you another reason in the top why I chose to take this one. All the branches down here were dead, which is fine. It's normal for a tree to shed its lower branches as they shade out. The live branches start right here, actually right here. The crown of the tree, which is the part that has the branches and the foliage, is fairly short compared to the length of the tree. This was a tall tree compared to its diameter, although I think I converted it from a tall tree into a long tree. The crown is about a quarter of the length of the whole tree, which is not a lot of photosynthetic material, which is a fancy word meaning leaves and stuff. If a crown of a tree is this small, it's not going to have as much photosynthesis. The tree's not going to grow as fast as it can if it has more foliage. If we take a look at the trees we are leaving, these trees have a whole lot more foliage. More than a third of the length of the tree has foliage. Those trees are going to be able to do more photosynthesis than this one. Those trees are going to grow faster. A quarter of the length is not horrible. It's not ideal, but it's, I'd say it's borderline. I think it's better to have trees that have at least a third of the length of the tree being full crown. Speaking of trees, let's cut down more. I took down this co-dominant tree. Now we're going to do what we call thinning from below. We're going to leave the dominant trees, take out the intermediate and suppressed trees, which could be a video subject in itself, explaining what each of those trees are. If we look at the stump, this is where it was thinned before. It started growing fast again. Now it slowed way down because these trees are overcrowding. Now we'll take out this smaller Douglas fir. There's nothing really wrong with it other than it's just excess. These trees are better than this tree. So this one's going to go. It's going to get shaded out by these more dominant trees anyway. Mm -hmm. 
This spot is looking better already. If we look up in the crowns, the crowns on these dominant trees are starting to crowd each other. But if we look on this side of them, we have this big hole here that was created by all these Douglas fir trees that died. There's plenty of room for them to fill out on this side. Then if we go to the other side of them, we have the same thing over here, a big hole where all these Douglas fir trees died. Since we have a gaping hole on this side and a gaping hole on the other side, I'm okay with leaving this grove a little bit thick. The tops of these trees can get sunlight all around them. Over the years, I just keep salvaging Douglas fir trees out of here as they die. They usually go that way. But what happens is some trees die, I cut them down here, clean up the mess. A year later, more trees die, I cut them down here, clean up the mess. Then I quit cleaning this mess up because I know I'm just gonna have more Douglas fir trees die and I'm gonna have to clean those up again. So now it's just become a mess. Over there is where we just thinned. In this open spot, I'm trying to favor these little oak sprouts because this would be a good spot for oak trees. This open area right here has soils that are better suited for oak. I'm trying to get these oaks established, but all around this spot, the Douglas fir keep dying, so I keep cutting them down. And this is the only open hole to cut them down in. So they fall down here, they smash down the oaks. So what I want to do is take out all the Douglas fir that are probably going to die so I can clean this place up once and for all, then these oaks will be free to grow. That spot I just showed you was back over there. One of the reasons why I'm going to leave this Douglas fir and another one up here, the one that's right in front of you over there, I was too lazy to go walk over there and show it to you, so I sent you over there to go look at it. If either of these die or I decide to harvest them, I can send them both out in a different direction instead of smashing all those oaks over there. The only two Douglas fir in this spot that didn't die that both look good, maybe those are the best genetics. We'll leave those ones. Or more likely, they're just getting into better soils over here that are better suited for Douglas fir. Back over here to this hole, all the Douglas fir trees died here. There's only one tree left, and that's this little thing. I'm just going to cut it down because I know it's never going to mount to anything. This tree was shaded out by these other trees for so long, if we look at the top, that's all we have for a crown. There's not enough foliage on this tree for this tree to take off and start growing now that it's been released. It would take a long time for this tree to eventually grow enough foliage to then become a productive tree. If we go back whoa, and look at the trunk, look at what we have. Woodpecker holes, but only on that one side. The rest of the way around the tree doesn't have that. Those woodpecker holes are all on the side of the tree that was facing southwest. When these trees died that were shading this tree most of its life and then taken out, it exposed the tree to direct sunlight from that southwest side. The woodpecker holes are on that side of the tree because that side of the tree died from sun scald. Imagine if you spent your winter here in Oregon, you had yourself covered up all winter and you became as white and pasty as I am now. Then you went to some tropical place along the equator and laid out in the sun all day with no clothes on. For some of you, that's probably not a great sight. For some of you, well, let's not get into that. But imagine what would happen to you. You would burn to a crisp. The same thing happens with Douglas fir here. If it's grown up its whole or most of its life in the shade, then you take that shade away, it sun scalds. A lot of people have the idea, I'm going to take the big trees off my property, sell those, get money, then I'll leave the smaller trees so they can grow. It doesn't always work that way. A lot of times they leave those smaller trees, those smaller trees don't have enough foliage on them to put on much growth, 
it can be a long time before they ever recover and start being productive trees, if at all. And in some cases, like this one, they're never going to mount anything and they're, <clears throat> and they're probably going to die. I'll show you something on that first tree we cut down. If we look close to the top, three quarters of the way up, this is a sun scald scar. I can tell there's more down here, but it's on the ground. Closer to the top, there's a few spots. That may have happened when this tree fell over that was shading its southwest side. Sun scald is more likely to happen up in this thinner bark. Not so much on the older, thicker bark. It was only minor sun scald. It was able to heal over it okay, but that could cause some defect in the wood in that part of the tree. The pines and the cedars, they don't sun scald here. The oaks don't. Madrone does in some cases. It's the Douglas fir here that are so prone to sun scald. We have to be really careful with those thinning them here. Not all Douglas fir sun scalds. It seems to be locational. The property I showed the video of the other day where they are thinning, it does sun scald there, but not as bad as it does here. We can get away with a lot more there than we can here. Over on the coast where my property is and at the ranch, sun scald really isn't an issue. The trees there, even the Douglas fir, don't really have a problem with that. Why that is, I don't know. Before you start thinning your property, just start looking around. Look at the trees, especially that southwest side. A lot of times it's two-thirds to three-quarters of the way up. If you see scars up and down that southwest side, then you know you might be susceptible to sun scald. You see a lot of that sun scald, be careful not to thin your trees too quickly. That may be another subject for a whole other video. We have that spot back there taken care of pretty well. I think it looks good. This is the clump we thinned out. We have those holes on both sides of it that I pointed out before. It looks sparse on this side and on this side, which it is. When we're on the ground, it may look like we need to plant more trees over here. But when we look up above, it actually looks pretty good the way it is. With that looking good back there, we need to continue on this way. This spot right here is especially susceptible to sun scald. What happened is the Douglas firs that were here died, which opened up the ones behind them to sun scald. Those ones weakened because of the sun scald. They died. Then that opened the ones up behind them to sun scald. Those died, which opened these ones up to sun scald. These ones died, which are now opening these ones up to sun scald. If we take a closer look at these, look at all the bug holes. That one died already. Let's take a closer look. This is one of those trees, not the ones that had those visible bug holes above. Look at all the pitch running down it. That means it's fighting off bugs that keep trying to bore into it. All of these trees here are the same way. They're all gonna die. I'm just gonna take them down. The concern about taking those trees might be if we take that shade away, the trees behind it are going to sun scald. Maybe, but let's step back and take a look from a distance. These are the trees in question. This is the tops of them. Not this one, this is the cedar in front of it. But this row of Douglas fir. That is the last row of trees of that height. All the ones behind it are much bigger, more healthy trees. These ones are in the riparian area. They are tapping into the creek. They have plenty of water. If I take these trees out, here are the tops of them. These trees up here, this is the more susceptible sun scald area. It's already above these trees. These are shading the thicker bark down below that's not so susceptible to sun scald on trees that are this big. With that in mind, I'm not too worried about taking these smaller trees out. And once I get these down, I'll show you another reason why I'm okay taking the shade away from those other ones.
took these madrones down because they were poorly formed. They were in decline. They were shading out some of the nice reprod in here. Like this maple and some of these oaks around here that I want to favor. Now they will have more sunlight to grow better out in this open spot. These madrones were tucked up against these trees where there are already too many trees back here. These trees are getting into the riparian area. I'm going to stop here. We want that to be thick and shaded. What we're left here with is a ring of trees that are healthy with full crowns. More than one third of the length of the tree is crown. And all the trees that were going to die anyway, we took out of this spot so we can establish new healthy trees. The other reason why I'm not real concerned about opening these trees up to direct sun this pine will be taking the brunt of that southwest sun, providing shade for those ones over there. And pines, ponderosa pine really likes that. They don't sun scald. And there's this pine right here. This may not have been the best example for a thinning video because the first half we did some thinning. The second half we basically did a clear cut or more, ac more accurately, an overstory removal. But that's part of forest management, is knowing when a stand is appropriate to be thinned, like this one, where we have a good stand of healthy trees that are going to respond well to thinning, versus over here, where the trees were just dying, to thin them would be pointless. Sometimes you gotta know when to hold them, when to thin them, and when to just take them out and replace them with something that's much better. It's too bad Kenny Rogers isn't still alive and in his prime. I could have been a songwriter for him. I also have another plan, an agenda for this area. We'll get into that in another video. Speaking of another video, in a recent video I also said I wasn't going to do any logging until I sold a bunch of lumber. I better hurry up and sell lumber because I got a bunch of logging to do here to clean up this mess. When I've done thinning videos in the past, they haven't done that well. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of interest. But thinning is one of my favorite things to do as far as forest management. I would like to do more thinning videos. If there's interest, I would like to do more. We'll see. But for now, I have something I need to go do. I gotta go.